hello to you. Welcome. Thanks for sticking with the series so far, um, episode three. And you're going to see a little bit about, of me out and about in, in Govan Hill, in the community. And that's what we're going to talk a little bit about today, um, photographing in the community and getting involved in the community, how to go about it. So this project, Govan Hill, I've been working on for a long time. I actually started 20 years ago when I was at college. A lot of my college assignments I would just do in the area because I lived in Govan Hill. So I would do a, maybe a photograph a portrait in a boxing club, maybe some street photography. So I still have some of those portraits from that time, but I really started the project again about seven years ago and that's the big project, Govan Hill, where I'm trying to document the area, an area that just means a lot to me, an area that I find endlessly fascinating. Love it, absolutely love Govan Hill. Then I'll pause there. Oh no, <laughs> this is gonna be used anyway. I've been working in the community for a long time and I think that this is really important. I'm not just jumping in and taking from the community. I think it's important as a photographer that I give back. Now, in what way do I give back? Well, we'll maybe get to that, but Govan Hill's a small area. It's about a mile squared. Um, it's a really diverse area. A lot of languages said that 88 languages are spoken within that area. And because it's small, I walk around an awful lot. And often during my walks, I don't get any pictures. I don't shoot portraits. It's not wasted time because I may see a location that might work for a portrait when someone's walking by and I think they'll work. Or I'm seen myself. So members of the community see me and maybe they ask me what I'm up to. And so when I explain what I'm doing, I show them some of my images, then they might tell one of their friends what I'm doing and very quickly I become known within the community. Other things that I do is have small exhibitions in the community, so sometimes I'll put my photographs up in walls. And the idea is these photographs of the mem community members, well, these, uh, this exhibition is for you. And so people within Govan Hill will see these people and maybe they might, the next time they see them, the, the people that I've photographed, they might speak to them. Say, oh, I saw you in that wall in that photograph. That was a nice photograph. Tell me a bit about yourself. So the project is definitely about community, bringing people together. And I walk around with a big camera on a tripod and there's no hiding what I do and I think that for me is very important that people know what I'm doing who I am and I'm very very open about that because a camera like that will attract interest but over time when you're seeing so much then people stop seeing it and stop caring about it and then that allows me to to go about um, the job really part of working in the community means going to community events that's where I might meet people to photograph. The carnival that you'll see footage of, it's, I'm photographing around the perimeters of that. So many people photograph the carnival and it's great. There's loads going on, but I tend not to do photographs like that. I, I like quite isolated portraits, uh, but often places, events like carnivals or like street music events, anything like that, um, then, I'll meet people or see people even watching the carnival that I might approach and photograph and arrange to photograph them perhaps after the event. And just being seen and people being able to speak to people about what I do, it's, over the years it's really helped. The strange one I'm getting though is the younger ones, how they re react. And there's this thing about being a YouTuber. This is quite new to me, but loads of the young kids come up and say, are you, a, are you a YouTuber? I'm thinking, I don't know. Huh? What's a YouTuber? But I think because I've had videos on YouTube or a couple of videos before, then this, this means the world to people who are perhaps below 10. And it's a big thing. And um, I don't know if that helps or not, you know, but um, I'm certainly getting asked, am I a YouTuber? So the day of the carnival, um, oh, it's good to get there early because you can't stop people when they're in a parade. So I did get there early and I, I made a couple of portraits. Again, there's this thing that what I want to represent is Govan Hill, the place, and the carnival is absolutely part of that, but it's not everyday life. And sometimes the photographs, you know, the costumes, where they're amazing, 
for my particular project is maybe just a little bit too theatrical. I want to look at these photographs in years to come and, and look at the fashions that people were wearing, the real street fashion that people were wearing at the time rather than the, the constructed costume. So I did make a couple of portraits that perhaps won't make the final cut of the project just because they're maybe just a little bit theatrical. At the same time, you can't stop yourself from photographing those outfits because they could turn out to be brilliant. It could turn out to be a brilliant photograph. So there's this balance of not wanting to waste film because I've got a limited amount of film, but at the same time, not wanting to miss a shot or a potential shot. And sometimes I make mistakes. You know, sometimes I just, when I ask someone to photograph them, maybe I just don't, on that particular day, I just don't have what it takes to, to get the image. It happens. So not every image I, I shoot for this project is going to be a success and will be part of the project. I did shoot a couple from the day of the carnival though. One was uh, Jim, Jim Hobbit a strong portrait and I photographed it. There's a wall that I use often that was right beside the park where the carnival was kicking off from. So I use that again. I often wonder, am I using it too much? But at the same time, I know it works. So I use that. Another portrait that stood out from that day was Cal. When I was walking along photographing the carnival, I noticed Cal and his friend watching the carnival and right away he stood out to me. Incredible. Uh, cheekbones, facial um, structure, I just thought he looked brilliant. It looked a little bit like Martin Bolan, and uh, mixed with Jim Morrison. During the parade, I, I just came off to the side and I spoke very quickly to Cal and, and I asked, would you be available later on today for a quick portrait if I could meet you? And did that about an hour later. Although I'm not getting a portrait from the carnival itself, uh, again, I'm seeing people, and I'm seeing people relaxed and natural, just watching the parade. And that's a good indicator for me as to how the actual final portrait will look. Another portrait, just from memory, that stood out is a portrait of Georgia Bloom. I met Georgia, and photographing in a community or photographing a place isn't just about the people who live in the area, because what makes up a place is those that come into the area or pass through the area. I met Georgia queuing for a, a not a restaurant, a cafe, that had got really good reviews for its food. And it turns out that she wasn't from Governor Hill at all. Uh, but I just really liked her outfit. Sometimes I'm looking for a very simple background. And often that's about light. Something I'll go into soon is how I light a subject, but often I shoot in the shade. And in this particular day, it was quite bright sunshine where I met her and it just, it wouldn't fit in with the other portraits. So I just crossed the road to an area that had a blank wall that I could use and I remember just it was round the corner and the wind was just blowing gently and the wind caught George's hair and it was just that little moment that made the shot. Um, photographer David Bay talks about it and he, he refers to it as the grace notes. Uh, another mentor of mine, Matthew Sowerby, used to speak of it as punctum and it's that little part of an, an image that really just grabs you, stands out, that separates that image from maybe the previous one that you'd just just taken. And so there was something about just the way the wind caught George's hair uh, wrapping around her face and her chin that just for me, for me that was a special shot. I, I just really liked that shot. Another portrait that I think is going to be strong is a portrait of Dylan. Now I've known Dylan for a long time. Dylan's a photographer and I really like Dylan. I, I meet Dylan a lot, but and I, I've been keen to photograph Dylan for a while, but again, it's it's the right moment. And this moment felt right. I met Dylan, there was a street festival one, it was music, and Dylan was dancing. And it, it was just the confidence that he has and just the way he just goes for things is so admirable that I really wanted to, to do a portrait of him on that day. Dylan suffers from a syndrome called M M. DP syndrome, and that prevents fatty uh, tissue from growing under the skin. Um, so Dylan's life isn't easy, and it hasn't been easy because of that, but what an example he is to all of us. Uh, the way he just embraces life, just goes for it, it's, it's incredible. I was so pleased that Dylan allowed me to make a portrait of him. Quite honored. At the same time nervous that will Dylan like this portrait that I've made, but I do, I, I love it. And it's because um, of the example that Dylan set, you know, I just think he's, he's an inspiration. So I'm looking forward to seeing, seeing that photograph. Mm -hmm.